Well, I don't know if anyone can see me because there's a mountain of a wall of boxes. It's like the Great Wall of YouTube. Oh. Ooh. Describe stuff. As the song goes, corn won't grow on Rocky Top, but these will, even if some take millions of years to grow. Should I open this one? That's heavy. Alrighty. This is from Tennessee. This is a piece of agate. Agate's super cool because it comes in a variety of different colors and patterns. We've had a lot of agate on the show. And if you wanna learn more about agate, check out this video here, but not after you're done with this video right now. I have four boxes, which is, you know, that's a lot to handle. So I'm gonna bring in one of my favorite geologists, Elizabeth, and she's gonna help me out. And today we're gonna to talk about all Talk all about Tennessee gems. You are a lifelong Tennessean. I am. Okay, so we have agate right here. So with agates, so Tennessee, our state rock for a while was agate. Um, and I believe now it's state mineral. Um, what's really interesting, so these, there's a couple different types that come from Tennessee. There's something called paint rock agate, which I don't believe this is paint rock agate. I haven't seen a whole lot of it. It's actually fairly rare. Um, the unfortunate reality of it is, is there's not too many places that produce it and a lot of it's on private property and a lot of the owners don't even know that it's there mm -hmm. necessarily. Um, this piece was actually collected by somebody else, but it was, the card for it reads that it was collected in Jellico, Tennessee, off, cool. off the road on I-75. So apparently they must have stopped, saw this which i would be very excited if i saw that too because you can cool. see the banding well yeah, you can see some banding you see right, some pretty color some and then they were able to slice it open and found this really pretty pattern inside um, another type of agate that comes from tennessee but again it's really rare i've seen it from other states but i've never seen a piece of true tennessee iris agate Ooh. so if you guys know about iris agate hey. it's the kind that makes a rainbow when you shine it get light to pass through hey, it. Take your left hand, point it up. That's where you're gonna find the video for Iris Agate. <laughs> okay, so if you wanna learn more about Iris Agate, Elizabeth is pointing to it right now. <laughs> what else is in the boxes? Well, you have to open them to find out. Oh, this is cute, look at that. Thank you to the Knoxville Gem and Mineral Society. This yep. is marble. Elizabeth, if I wanted to find Marble, where else would I find it? Perhaps in a large American city? Tennessee is famous for its pink marble. Now it comes in several different colors. We've done other videos on it, I know. You've mm -hmm. done the carving video. You wanna point where that video is gonna be? Up again. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so places that you can find Tennessee pink marble. Number one, uh, one of my favorite cities, Washington DC at the Washington Monument. And then you can find it in the National Gallery of Art. Uh, we talked about in St. Louis, which I used to actually live in St. Louis, so I yeah. love St. Louis. And then of course, Tennessee has a ton of it everywhere in a lot of our government buildings, but then you also have it in Oregon, Arizona, uh, Grand saw Central some in State. Arkansas, and then back to Grand Central Station. In New York City, in New York. so we love Tennessee down here, but so does the rest of the country, they love yep. Tennessee marble. What's really neat is that when I was looking up all the buildings in the United States that had Tennessee marble on them, there's like a really long list. I mean, mm -hmm. I saw some buildings in St. Louis had them. There's some buildings in Love Oregon. Don't remember the city, but there's somewhere in Oregon that has it. Um, Arizona's got it. I mean, really everywhere. Um, and yeah, one of the big reasons for that is that Tennessee was one of the top three producers of marble back in the 1800s. The thing about Tennessee marble is, is that it's not quite a true marble. So as a geologist, we know that limestone, when it gets heated up and then it heats up so much that it recrystallizes is called marble. Well, in Tennessee, that's not quite the case. So the marble or so our limestone really did not get quite hot enough to become a true marble but it was highly prized by rock quarrymen for its ability to be polished and carved into beautiful pieces of art. And it was easy to endure as well. It was easy, but it was durable. So that made it just this really highly desirable, beautiful piece of rock. 
Um, what's so interesting though is we have tons of different shades hmm. of Tennessee marble. And you can almost tell where they came from because of the colors. And so something I didn't know until recently, which I found really interesting, is there locally there's a place called Cedar Bluff and it's this big road that runs through Knoxville. Well, what's so cool about it is, is Cedar Bluff is not called Cedar Bluff because of cedar trees on a hill. It was called Cedar Bluff because of the marble that was mined there is cedar in color. How cool! So, which is really cool. Fun so it's this fact. dark, it's this more darkish reddish brown color. So it looks kind of like the color of cedar wood. Hmm. So with these marbles, what you can see all this texture inside of this rock, and it's actually something called fossiliferous, which means that it has a lot of fossils in it. So these are basically little smushed up crinoids, bryozoans, and different different oceanic fossils of little critters. Let's move on to our other boxes because I know we have other cool gems. Wait, what is that? Oh, oh so what? there's multiple stuff going on in these yeah, boxes. Yeah, I'm a little, this is kind of trippy. Okay, so. Okay, so Tennessee Pearl can be found in the Tennessee River, which runs. Well, it really runs all across Tennessee. Yeah, it runs all across Tennessee. We love the Tennessee River. Um, this is absolutely beautiful. Tell me a little bit about this piece. The first instances of Tennessee freshwater pearls were actually found on accident. People would get them to eat them. Um, but once people realized that we had this source here in Tennessee along the Mississippi River, really it became a pearl rush. Very cool. So back in the 1800s, there was a literal pearl rush in Tennessee, and they became this extremely popular item all throughout the United States at the time. Very cool. <laughs> all right, so we have quartz right here. So quartz is in a lot of different types of, literally types of rock. Yep. So a lot of our, um, oh gosh, just granite. Granite has a lot of quartz in it. So what's so different about ours is that our quartzes are called Douglas diamonds. So there is a reservoir here in Tennessee called Douglas Lake. Mm -hmm. And the lakes, during the winter, they drop the water out of the lake using our dam systems to help create hydroelectric power. Well, so when that happens, you can walk out onto the mud flats and you can find these quartz crystals. Yep. This is exactly like if you guys have ever heard of Herkimer Diamond from yep, Herkimer, New York. Herkimer Diamond is actually not a diamond. It's it quartz. It's a quartz. So Douglas Diamond, Herkimer Diamond, when you hear those, just remember misnomer. They are so, actually quartz. So the reason that they ca called that and this misnomer perpetuated itself is that these are little doubly terminated quartzes that appear to be faceted. So they're very, they're, they have a really great luster. These are kind of dirty. Um, I mine them myself. And so this is what I would look for out in the fields that our tractor would actually till up. And so you could see that there was this seam here of this quartz inside of this rock. And so what would happen is I would basically just start hammering away until that seam broke open. And sometimes they would contain these guys. The best way to do it is wait until the water level in the lake goes down. There's actually charts online you can find. Um, and you wait for the level to go down. And what you want to do is wait for a good rainstorm and then go out the day after because the mud will actually be washed off of these rocks. And so then you basically wait to see the shine. All right, last box. All right, in the last box. And this will be a doozy because this is one of my favorite mines in the whole wide world. Oh. Ah. Not just because it's e? from Tennessee. Does it start with an E? Yes. Kind of like a wood? Yeah. Uh, Elmwood. <laughs> All right, Elizabeth, tell us why you love the Elmwood mine so much. These actually, in the mineral collecting community, set Tennessee apart from many other places around the world. Mm -hmm. So here we've got our different little Elmwood suites. So the only mineral we're missing that is really famous in Elmwood is something called Galena. Um, and we've seen Galena before. It's a lead sulfide mineral and it's really heavy and it makes a big, nice, pretty cube. Well, so what we've got here, we have calcite. This is a dog toothed calcite. And this is on dolomite. So a lot of the mine, I guess like the waste rock is actually dolomite material. And then you have fluorite. And okay. then the white on here is barite. That looks kind of, that looks kind of funky with the barite and the it's, fluorite. Yeah, it's funky, but it's highly desirable. And then this is sphalerite. So the main ore out of the mine is this really beautiful, lustrous, red to almost black mineral. And it's an ore of zinc. And fun fact, sphalerite can actually be found in Spain as well. And if you want to learn more about that stone, Elizabeth, 
Where are you going to... Hey oh, good job. <laughs> I'm getting used to this. I'm doing good. <laughs> we do have two surprises. Hey. For everybody. Actually, three. So the first one, let's get the little guy. This is called a honey calcite. Hey, that's pretty. Isn't that beautiful? It's gorgeous. So you can get a beautiful honey-colored calcite from Elmwood. But another thing that Elmwood is famous for is something called Carthage Corners on their fluorite. This is a prime example of another type of Elmwood fluorite that is available on the That's market. That's super cool. So these are, so this is naturally formed like this. So these are purple polka dots on colorless fluorite. What is neat about these though, and I don't know if it's really obvious, but you can see that these corners are clearer and less opaque than the other ones. Mm -hmm. So these are something famous that is produced by Elmwood fluorides and they are called Carthage Corners because they occur in Carthage, Tennessee. And those Carthage corners are where it looks clearer and less opaque. One last thing. Well, two last things. Two more things. Which, and then we do you want this on your set? Yeah, Just be very we'll careful putting it down. Okay, so we are going to shamelessly bring out my favorite book. And if you want to purchase our favorite book, there are links below to... Get it for yourself. To get it for yourself. On the front cover of this book, is an Elmwood fluorite. Now it is, it is huge and it's beautiful That's and it is note. very heavy. Yeah. And I think I'm gonna have to make some room. This is the piece that is on the front of Man, our book. That is the largest crystal I have ever seen of fluorite. Just so everybody knows, this weighs probably 35 pounds. It's like a toddler. So it's, it's pretty darn heavy. And um, the reason for that is the sphalerite on it is very, very well, also heavy. Also, it's big. Well, too. it's just big, but the sphalerite is where most of that weight comes from, and the whole bottom of it is made of sphalerite. All right, guys, if you want to see more um, great specimens, if you want to learn more about great mines, but most importantly, if you want to tour the United States with us as we look at gems across America, um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Send Elizabeth a big thank you for all the hard work she's done for this episode today and for Christopher for contributing um, specimens. And also thanks to the Knoxville Gem and Mineral Society. We really appreciate your donation for today's episode. I want you to take a look at the purple, um, what, the purple, the beautiful purple hue yeah. of this fluorite and we are proud that this is Tennessee grown. Um, all right, should we call it an episode? I think we should. All right, everyone. Elizabeth and I are gonna try to figure out how to get all of this. Well, that's heavy. You got it on the table, so I think I need to be a good friend and get it off the table for you. I'll, I'll pick it up. <laughs> all right, all right, guys. We got to figure out how to put this this um, behemoth, monster away. This monster back to bed. This is what you should not be afraid of finding underneath your bed. Get it? Monsters underneath your bed. All right, we're done. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, and we'll catch you up um, next week. Thanks, guys. Bye.